What's up everybody, Jolly here, talking about why Halo 4 is a disappointment. First of all, let me clarify that no way do I think Halo 4 is a bad game. In my eyes, Halo 4 is just a disappointment. The transition between Bungie and 343 Studios seemed like only a minor speed bump on the road to Halo 4. Bungie laid down so much groundwork that even I could scrap together a team and make Halo 4. Of course, you guys know I'm lying. But you get the picture. Halo Reach fully fleshed out the Forge world and gave users nearly unlimited customization. So why would anyone worry about Halo 4? Bungie practically threw up the metaphorical alley-oop pass for 343 to slam it in. Unfortunately, that's not how it went down. Many Halo 4 players won't think twice about the multiplayer. It works just like it always has. There are familiar game types and playlists with a few new additions and tweaks. So what is the problem you ask? Well, under the hood, Halo Reach's deep multiplayer customizations have been gutted inexplicably. The simplest gameplay settings from Reach are gone. You can no longer drop the flag or oddball. You can't disable sprint. You can't customize weapon spawns like in previous Halos. And the list goes on and on. My question is, why? Why would 343 take out staples in the Halo series many of us have come to love? It's a question that burns in the minds of many hardcore Halo players, such as myself. There are many shortcomings of Halo 4 that are being overlooked. One in particular is the map rotation on the playlist. There are two maps on the disc, Erosion and Ravine not even being used. Furthermore, if you go to 343's website, they list the maps as playable under their map section. However, two months after the game's release, we still haven't seen them in action. In fact, we received new DLC maps in the playlist before we saw two maps included on the disc. This is peculiar to say the least. Once again, I have to ask, why? While we're on the subject of playlists, let's discuss another issue. Halo 4 is the smallest choice of playlist since Halo 2, and yet there are more copies in the wild than any other Halo. Currently, Halo Reach has 16 different playlists while Halo 4 has a meager 11. In an interview with Halo Waypoint, a 343 employee said, We put new playlists into rotation to keep the experience fresh each week and to test the community's response to different game types. Well, why not just leave in these new playlists? If the population is a concern, then why does Halo Reach have five more playlists with a much smaller install base? Also, why are popular playlists like Double Team and Team Snipers missing? Halo 2, 3, and Reach had both of these playlists because of their popularity. I would argue that 343's current strategies have kept the game stagnant. Loyal Halo fans want to go online and enjoy a plethora of options but they just can't anymore. This is where the playlist analysis becomes more detailed and a bit more nerdy, so you're warned. Five playlists doesn't sound like much, but it's more than just a number. More than anything, it's the content of these playlists that are suspect. Let's start with the most popular playlist, Big Team Infinity Slayer. It's easy to see why this playlist is so popular. It has everyone's favorite game type, Team Deathmatch, and nothing else. Therein lies the problem. Halo Reach and its predecessors combined objective-based game types with Deathmatch to keep the experience fresh. Currently, you can only play Deathmatch on seven maps if you have the DLC, which collectively accounts for seven different experiences. You could easily have your fill of this playlist in just a few days, as I did. Halo Reach, on the other hand, has 12 different game types. The map comparison wouldn't be fair because of all the DLC and Forge maps with Reach, but the game types combined with just two maps greatly increases the fresh factor in Reach compared to Halo 4. The next comparison I will draw on is between Team Objective and Halo Reach and three playlists in Halo 4. If you jump into Reach's team objective right now, you will find that you have 285 different scenarios because 
there are several different game types within each playlist, which isn't the case for Halo 4. Compare this to Halo 4's CTF, Oddball, and Regicide playlists, which accounts for only 18 different variations. Once again, Reach has more maps, but even if I dropped 200 variations from Reach, the comparison would still be overwhelmingly in favor of Halo Reach. In short, Halo Reach has many game types per playlist, while Halo 4 only offers one game type per playlist. If Halo Reach took the same approach to playlists as its big brother, Reach would have close to 100 different playlists. I'm only scratching the surface of my complaints. I could go on for a while, but I want to get the community talking about the most pressing issue, content. Fundamentally, I enjoy the game, but I've played everything Halo 4 has to offer, and I'm left wanting more. In turn, I've moved on to other FPSs. Once 343 catches up with what Bungie did for their community, I will be back on board. But until then, you can find me in the Black Ops 2 lobbies.